My name is Joe. Joe Norland. I'm a shepherd. I live in a town called Ten Bridges. But I go to work every day on a farm. The farm is called Castle Farm. It's owned by Mrs. Sharp and her daughter, Jill. Their foreman, Mike Burns, was leaving. No one knew why. When I arrived that morning, Mrs. Sharp was having a row with Mr. West, the warden of our local youth hostel. They were usually good friends. Now listen, three of my sheep have been missing in the last week, and you and your hostelers are to blame. No, 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 Mrs. Gently does it. Take it easy. Mum, please. You keep out of this, Jill. I know what I'm talking about. But look here, Mrs. Sharp, how am I to blame? You and your boys, you... You tramp across the fields and, and you frighten the sheep. And you leave all the gates wide open. Oh, no, you're wrong there, you know. No, I'm not having that. No. But Mike told me only last week he, he saw two of your hostlers up in my north field and, and all the gates were lying wide open. Well, that's a load of codswater because none of my hostlers were near your farm yesterday. He's right, Mrs. Sharp. I was up at the north field all yesterday. There was nobody there. I don't care. All I know is our sheep are missing. And I want you and your boys to keep off my land. All right, Mrs. Sharp, if you say so. Right. Yeah, you know, that's what I call a tarted yeah, what a woman. Sharp by name and sharp by nature. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Warden. Mum didn't mean all that. You know how she is. Lately she's been so upset about Mike. Yeah, but your mum knows the warden wouldn't let hostlers leave gates open. All right, don't get at me. Now, 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 calm down, both of you. We're all agreed my hostlers know the country code. And if your mother really wanted to know where a sheep had gone to, she should try asking some of the local lads. I mean, what about that pair up there? That pair of jokers perched up there. Look at them. Well, who are they? Yeah, I passed them on the way down here. That's why I stopped here. I was going to warn your mother about them, but you didn't give me a chance to open my mouth. Who are they? The Beasley brothers. Ted and Dennis Beasley. More like the Beasley brothers, if you ask me. Anyway, that's what I call them. Yeah, look, see that? That flashing. That's a sun on their binoculars. They're watching us at this very moment through a pair of spying glasses. They're watching this farm. Why should they? I don't know. But you can take my word for it, they're not up there just to admire the scenery. All right, Ted and Dennis, I can see you. Right pair of beasts, are you? Just you keep an eye on them, Joe. If I were you, I'd watch them like a hawk. I will that. And thanks for the warning, Warden. Joe, do you think we should call the police? Oh, no, Chill. They'd only laugh at us. After all, there's no law against anyone having a look at a farm, is there? Come on. Perhaps they'll go away soon. Joe, look. They've gone. Yeah, what did I tell you? So everything's all right. Well, aren't we stupid? It was nothing after all. I don't know what we're going to do, Jill. We'll just have to sell your father's horses. We'll never manage the farm without Mike. We will manage, Mum. Come on. We've a hundred acre farm here, and just you and me and Joe to run it. If only your dad was still alive. Come on, Mum. Cheer up. It's time I was off, then. Yes, well, uh... Well, I've got your money, Mike, and a new insurance card. Thank you, Mrs. Sharp. Aren't you going to check it? No, I'm sure it's all right. Well... Well, goodbye, then. ta -da. Mike, why can't you stay? Why do you have to leave? I'm sorry, Jill, I can't help it, believe well, me. Well, why not? Can't you tell us? No. 
If it's money you want, Mum will raise your wages, won't you, Mum? We've been into all that, Jill. He knows how I feel. It's not money. It's got nothing to do with money. Then what is it? I can't tell you. Now, will you leave me alone, please? I would tell you if I could. He's been like that all the week. He won't say a word. Well, there must be something wrong. Never known him like that before. Mum, look. He's left his cap. Here, give it me. I'll take it to him. No, I'll take it to him. I'll see if I can make him stay. Never say die, Mum. Beasley brothers. The Beasley brothers? Yeah, Mike and the Beasley brothers. Jill, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. The next day, Jill was cleaning out Mike's old room. Have you finished yet? Just about. There's a lot of work up there. You should see it. The dust. Inches thick. Watch it. Sorry, couldn't help it. You know, I bet he's never brushed that room. Men, they're all the same. Hey, Jill! It's a letter from his dad. His father? Yeah, Bill Burns got a big butcher shop in Ten Bridges. What does it mean? Prison. You must go with them. Them. Hey, that must mean the Beasley brothers. Joe, we should take this to the police. Oh, come on, don't be daft. They'll only laugh at us. After all, it's only some bits of paper. Well, we've got to do something. I'll go and see Mike at the Beasley Brothers' farm. I can take his cap. That'll give me a good reason for going. And perhaps while I'm there, I can get Mike to tell me what's going on. Hey, that's a great idea. I'm coming with you. Oh, no. I can manage this. You leave this to me. I wasn't looking forward to a meeting with the Beasleys. But with a good excuse like Mike's cap, I wouldn't feel afraid. Well, why don't you take Canty? He'll get you there quicker than your old bike. Aye, I will that, thanks. I should come to help you, in case you run into trouble. Do you? I think I'll be safer without you. What a rotten thing to say. All right, but if you're not back by tea time, I'm calling the police. Oh, now don't go mad. This might turn out to be a false alarm. After all, I'm only going there to talk.
What are you doing here, sonny boy? Snooping? Yes, yes, a snooper. Dozy! Is this what you call keeping watch? Letting this snooper creep up on us? I'm sorry, Ted. I, I don't know what came over me. I must have just closed my eyes for a split Shut second up. and... What's your game, sonny boy? What are you after? Mike Burns. Mike Burns? We don't know any Mike Burns. Why should you think he'd be here? I bought his cap. Now listen here, sonny boy. Me and my brother are hard-working farmers. This here is marking paint on my hands, do you see? We're out in the backyard marking sheep, and I don't intend to be bothered with Mike Burns, or his cap, or with you. So clear off! Yeah, that's right. Get off! If I ever catch you snooping round here again, this won't be red paint on my hands, sonny boy. It'll be your red blood, savvy? The Beasley brothers were no longer watching me. I pulled Canty's head round and made for the back of the farm. I felt sure Mike was there somewhere and I was going to find him. So why did you tell the snooper you were coming to this farm, eh? Why did you tell him? For the last time, I never told him. And how did he know you were here? Somebody must have told him. Well, perhaps he made a guess. Don't lie to us. I'm not lying, honest. Those weren't the Beasley sheep. They had completely different marks on them. Last warning, do you hear? You try and trick me, Burns, and you'll suffer for it. I believe you this time, but watch it. Hey. Hey, Ted. Dennis Beasley had seen him. What could I do? Hey. Hey, Ted. The boy's horse. What about it? It's over there. Oh, you're a real treasure, you are. Best you fall asleep now you see visions. Was there? I swear it, Ted, the boy's horse. Perhaps we better look round. Not you, Dozy. You stay here. You take that side. Anything? No, boss. Nothing. You dozy fool, get your eyes tested. But I did see your knees. I had 
to get to the hostel and find Mr. West. Those stolen sheep were proof that the Beasleys were rustlers. I was having a quiet Take a look at this. What's this? Sheep in Beasley's yard. Oh, all right. Come on here, lad. Come in. Ah. Here's all the local sheep marks. Green stroke on shoulder. There. You see? Green stroke on shoulder. They belong to Josh Middleton, Grimshaw Farm. Green dot on rump. Green dot on rump. Harry Miller of Cowside Farm. Well, this is it. By God, Joe, lad, this looks like the end of the Beasley Beasley brothers to me. Come on, let's get over there. <laughs> With a better look, we'll catch him. Red-handed. <laughs> This is an unexpected pleasure. Don't you believe it? This is going to be no pleasure for you, Beasley. Not for you, it isn't. This lad here says you have some stolen sheep in your backyard. Stolen sheep? Dennis, what do you know about stolen sheep? Stolen sheep? No, I know nothing, Ted. Well, now, isn't that strange? All right, cut out the funny stuff, Beasley. I'm going to look in your backyard. Oh, that's fine. You're very welcome, I'm sure. Now, don't you try and stop me. Who's stopping you? I'll show you the way. Stolen sheep, one. You know, these look like our sheep to me. What do you say, Dennis? Oh, aye, Ted. Aye, they're our sheep. Unless I'm colour blind. <laughs> Looks as if you were worse an apology, Warden. But they were there. Warden, the sheep have been changed. Mike, you know... No, sonny boy, you just made a mistake. Got your facts wrong, didn't you? Didn't he, Warden? Aye, did, didn't he? The lad made a stupid mistake. Warden, you... No, I'm sure the lad meant well, Warden. Just a little over keen, weren't you? That's all, wasn't it? Do you remember what I said to you last time we met? Gave you a warning, didn't I? Didn't take that warning, did you? Silly little snooper, you made me angry. Yes, angry, sonny boy. And when lads make me angry, I make them sorry. Very sorry. Silly little snooper. No, 
don't be hearing from us. Sweep and I kept watch over the sheep. But if the Beasleys were about, we never saw them. and nothing happened. Only Jill believed my story that Big Ted was out to get me. She helped me keep watch, when she could spare the time from looking after the Shire horses. I had to bring the sheep in off the moors. It was shearing time. Fine, warm weather for clipping all the wool off the sheep. Harry Crabtree, the local shearer, was coming to help us. <laughs> Harry was good at shearing. gentle and quick, and could shear a sheep in four minutes. We were a silent team. While Harry sheared, I marked them and Jill bound up each fleece. You were at the Beasley's farm early this morning, weren't you, Harry? Well, yes, Mr Crabtree, you were at the Beasley's farm, weren't you? He was usually friendly, but that day he didn't seem keen on talking. The warden called from the Beasley brothers. Do you know that? It's a joke, do you get it? Beastly Beasley. You see, we, we just wondered if you'd seen Mike Burns while you were there. And... I don't know anything about anything. Oh, come on, Mr Crabtree, you must have seen him. We know he's there. We only wanted to ask you. You see, if he'd have been there... All right, Harry. Sorry, Mr Crabtree. Here. From Mike. Mike? He says, take one in three if you want to see. We what? Take one in three? Well, what does Mike mean? One in three? I've said enough. You'll have me killed. One in three. Well, we'll open it, Joe. Don't worry about that. Hello, our old kiddo. I burst out, should I say, your round, son, till I never was. Mike. Well, perhaps there's a cold message. Well, one in three if you want to see what it means. One in three words. Oh, burst, I, round, I, Mike. A lot of old rubbish. Every third letter. L, O, O. Okay. Look. Look. O. You. Look out. Look out. Look out. 
Dan. Oh, come on, Jill. Let's go and stack them bales. We can't waste any more time. Jill and I usually enjoyed taking the wool to Ten Bridges, but I was still worrying about that letter. Harry Crabtree, isn't it? Oh, what news is that then, eh? Well, haven't you heard? Why well, he was set upon and beaten up, leaving your farm this morning. Beaten up? Who did it? Well, nobody knows. He's in the hospital in Ten Bridges now. You'll get me killed. You'll get me killed. That's what he said, Joe. Do you remember? There must be a hidden message in that letter. Hey, Pat, carry on, will you? Won't be two minutes. Perhaps we can't have wrong. No, Jill, it's still no good. I never say die. But some of it makes sense. Why should it go wrong? This goes wrong. What about that? That's a question mark. Well, I know it's a question mark. Perhaps we should have counted the question mark as a letter. Today, are you... S T L B R S Rustlers Today Rustlers Today that's now Well our sheep Well there's only your mother at home Mike was trying to warn us the Beasley brothers Come on Joe let's get back we may be in time <laughs> We had to get back to Castle Farm. Mrs. Sharp was alone there. We drove as fast as we could. Could we get there before the Beasley brothers? Wasn't it? Ah, the Beasley brothers, I'm sure of it. Mom! Mom! Mom? She's not in the house.
running out to, to see what it was and and I think something hit me on, on the back of the head and and I don't remember anymore but the lorry you must go after the lorry what are we going to do I've got to stop the lorry how are we going to do that I can take the short road past the hostel the bees will go on the long road we can cut them off at the crossroads you will pick up the warden on the way oh well, we'll need him all right well, will we do it in time Joe oh, well if we're quick well, we'll have to hurry. Come on. Oh, Mum, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Now, go on. Be quick. It wasn't easy to persuade the warden to come with us. But when we told him Mrs Sharp had been hurt, he knew it was serious. see the Beasley's lorry coming towards us. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. We've got them. It looks like it. Let's hope this is the end of the Beastly Beasley brothers once and for all. Joe, put the van across the road. That'll force them to stop. Right. Then what can I do for you? You're turning eye women. All right, Beasley, you can cut the cackle or open up the back of your lorry. Why? You know very well why it's full of stolen sheep from Castle Farm. Who's been telling you this fairy story? We did. You beat up my mother. And we saw you driving away from the farm. That's a lie. We've been nowhere near your farm, have we, Dennis? Of course not. Nowhere near. How dare you say such things? As for your mother, we've not set eyes on her for the last six months, have we, Dennis, have we? All right, then, let's see you prove it. Now, look, Beasley. If you don't open this lorry this instant, I'm going to telephone the police. Satisfied? You've hidden the sheep somewhere. Have I? Have we, Dennis? Hidden them? Hidden them where? Would you like to look in me pocket? You think I got your sheep hidden in my pocket? You'd like to search me, Warden? Perhaps there's more to this than meets the eye. Are you up to something, sonny boy? You or your girlfriend here? Are you perhaps rustling a few sheep and trying to put the blame on somebody else? Yeah. There's your sheep rustler, Warden. What a lie. You know perfectly well you stole our sheep. Prove it, Missy. Like the man said, let's see you prove it. There. Sheep stealer. Cheerio, Warden. Better luck next time. believe them, do you, Warden? Well, this has been a real stunner. I just don't know what to believe. They're lying. They are lying. You must see that. All I can see is that Joe's made me look a fool again. But I'll tell you this much, Joe. The next time you come running to me for my help, the next time, you better bring some proof. Never say die, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
We went on with our work about the farm. But all the time, Jill and I were worrying about our stolen sheep. We had to find them somehow. Jill was sure they couldn't be far away. She even pinned up the local map on the stable door and kept on going to look at it. Must be in a secret hiding place. That's the answer. Oh, well, I know that. Yeah, but where? Well, here's the crossroads where we stopped the lorry. And here's our farm. Yeah. Now, they must have unloaded the sheep somewhere between the crossroads and the farm. Right? Well, that's somewhere around here. Yeah, but it can't be far from the Beasley's farm, now, can it? Well, let's start searching. Oh, come on. I'm like looking for a needle in a haystack. Oh, come on, Joe. We mustn't think like that. We are going to find the sheep. Never, Never say, say die. die. I'll get Canty. Oh, yeah. Well, that's great. And what about me? Your bike. We're here. There wasn't a sheep in sight anywhere. Searched all day and found nothing. The only place left was the woods. We'll try that way. What are you after? Sorry, we thought you were a sheep. Me? A sheep? No, sorry. It was a mistake. I got a pig here. A bit of a pig. Will I do? Go on. Take a bite. Will I? No, I... thank you. But you get on. You know, when you're like me, go on from place to place and go on from job to job, you have to keep your strength up. I always eat a lot of sausages. Look, have you seen any sheep round here? Sheep? <laughs> the moor is full of sheep. No, sheep in a hiding place. Somewhere near a farmhouse, say. One down that way. Nice hiding place. There's no one in it. Come on, Jill, let's go. Ah, oh, don't rush. Stay. Look, you haven't had any pig. Come on, see, I, I got plenty.
the hiding place we were looking for. Our sheep must be there. Nothing but ruins. It's no use, we'll never find the sheep this way. What more can we do? I think we could talk to Mike. He must know where the sheep are hidden. I'm sure he'd tell us. But Joe, you I don't... know. The Beasley brothers see us. We have to be careful. Oh, we would be careful. All right, what are we waiting for? It twit, your tea's getting cold. Danny! Sorry, Ted. What's the matter with you? Are you asleep again? Just come in, Ted. Just having a little sit down, Ted. Have you got the marking paint? Oh, aye, aye, Ted. It's all done. I want to get into that house. Why? I bet they're holding Mike a prisoner in there. He must be in there. Dozy fool. Jill, if you could get them out of the house for two seconds. Me? Now, wait a minute. Yes, bit. then I could creep in while the backs were turned, don't you see? Oh, go on, you can do it. Just knock and say something to get them out of the house. Well, what? Say what? Well, anything, it doesn't matter. It's our only chance. All right, I'll try it. Great. But you'll be careful. Don't get yourself killed. Oh, don't worry. You keep them talking for two seconds, I'll be in and out like lightning. Let's go. Never say die. Hello, Mr. Beasley. I mean, Mr. Beasley. Oh, hello. Uh, what, uh, what... Who is uh, it? It's that girl. What girl? Uh, Jill Sharp, Mr. Beasley. Who? Jill Sharp of Castle Farm. What do you want? Now, look here, you leave us alone. We don't know anything about George Sheep. If I had another word about them, I'm going to the police, do you hear? So clear off. Aye. Do you hear? Mr. Beasley, I don't want to talk about our sheep. You don't? No. I want you to look at my horse. Your horse? Why? Well, there's something wrong with it. What? Well, something wrong with its legs. Legs? How do you mean? Well, I'll explain when we get there. Do come. Well... Oh, you too, Mr. Beasley. Me? But... Well, bring but... your tea. Why do you need both of us? Well, you may need his advice. You what?
Suddenly, I saw some blotting paper on Ted's desk. There were ink marks on it. How could I read those marks? A letter to... Dear Burns, I'll be bringing you 50 sheep, our sheep. Ted Beasley. You and your horse, get away. Something funny going on here. There was nothing wrong with that rotten horse. So what's it all mean, eh? What's her game? Perhaps she was playing a joke. Joke? You're a joke, dozy twit. Shut up. No, there's something behind all this. They're plotting something. I can feel it. For one thing, where's that Joe? I bet he's around here somewhere. You can bet he's behind all this. That little snooper, if I get my hands on him, I'll kill him. Have a look outside. Has the girl gone? Well? Has she gone? No, she's still there. Well, tell her to clear off! Uh, uh here, miss, uh, dig away, please. Not like that, you dozy twit. Clear off, you brat! Now what, Ted? You get the marking stuff and stick it in the back of the lorry. We're not waiting till tomorrow to get rid of those sheep. We're doing it now. We'll change the marks and dump them on Burns before nightfall. Then if those little snoopers are plotting something, they'll be too late to nab us, eh, Dennis? Do you see? Oh, by the heck. Oh, aye. Yeah. Clever, Ted. It's real clever. You're a genius, Ted. Done it all, have you? You great twit. You sure that stuff's safe? We don't want it spilling all over the place. Have a look. Ah, oh, Ted, nothing can happen to it. You lazy twit. I had an idea when I looked at that bucket of paint. Red paint. I could use that.
I didn't know where the Beasleys were taking me, but I knew they would lead me to our sheep. I only hoped Jill could follow my trail of red paint. What's been happening here? I don't know, Ted. It must have tipped over. You ought to blame you, clumsy twit. What's all this, then? You little rat! What have you been up to? Nothing, nothing! Nothing? Tried to trick Ted Beasley, did you? Ah, uh, put an end to your snooping! Oh, Mike! Yes, your friend Mike. You can both lie there and rot together. Pleasant dreams. Come on. We've not got time to change those marks. We'll have to get rid of those sheep with a sharp brand on them. Let's get them in the lorry and get out of here. Yeah, right, Ted. Oh, Joe, why did I ever get you into all this? It's all my fault. Cheer up, Mike. Don't worry. We'll soon be out of here. You don't understand, Joe. The only time we'll get out of here is if the Beasleys let us out. Ah, but, Mike, listen. I've laid a trail of red paint from the van. Jill's falling on Canty. She's gonna be here in no time. No time? Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? What's the matter? It won't make any difference, even if she does get it. Well, Mike, what is it? The Beasleys were already loading the sheep into their lorry. Ah! They were going to drive them to Mike's father in Ten Bridges. Well, Mike, what is it? Tell me. Well, just listen for a minute, Joe. I can't hear anything. Well, that's just it. You can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. But these walls are over a foot thick, Joe. That door's solid oak. Jill might turn up here, but she won't hear us yelling for help. Oh, we can shout. We can make her hear. She won't hear us, Joe. And that was it. They'd left us to our fate. We never even heard them drive away. We couldn't hear a thing in there. Complete silence like that is terrifying. I couldn't understand why Mike had left us and joined the Beasleys. You remember when we were losing the sheep early on? And the Beasley brothers were stealing them, but we didn't know that then. Put ideas into me, Ed, Joe. I thought I could steal sheep and everyone had blamed me on the rustlers. So I did. I stole two. Sold them to me dad in the butcher's shop. Oh, Mike, what a mess. Well, somehow, I don't know how, but the Beasley brothers found out about it. And, of course, they put the screws on dad and me. Threatened to tell the police and everything, unless we did what they wanted. So that's why I had to join them on the farm. 
And that's why Dad has to keep buying all their stolen sheep. Look, if we don't get out of here, the Beasleys are going to get clean away. I know those sheep are on the way to me, Dad, right now. If we could only find some way of letting Jill know that we're in here. Got to find something to make a noise with. There's nothing here. What about this? <laughs> well, you couldn't shift that. Well, I can try. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Now let's see what we can do with it. Sounded good and loud. I see. Now again. Come on, Mike. Oh, it's hopeless. Oh, come on, don't say that. Joe? Come on, Mike. We've got to keep going. It's Jill. She's had us. Great idea. Mike. Jill, our job's not finished yet. Yeah, Mike's right. If we're going to catch the Beasley brothers, we've no time to waste. Well, where are they? Where have they gone to? Gone to me dad's place in Ten Bridges. Hey, Joe, I know a quick way to Ten Bridges across country. Oh, but we're no match for the Beasley brothers. Well, perhaps we could hold on to them while Jill gets some help. Well, if I could get to the hostel, then... Yes, the hostel. You could get the warden. Yeah, and the hostelers. Yes, I will. I'll get them all. Now, don't forget, it's me dad's cold storage warehouse by the canal. The warden knows where it is. Go on. Feeling fit? We've got a long, hard run ahead of us. Well, I'm all right. What about you? I'll be all right. Right then, after me. The Beasley brothers were already crossing the moors, taking our sheep to Ten Bridges. Mike and I had set off running as fast as we could, but we were a long way behind the Beasley brothers. Jill was galloping as fast as she could to the hostel to get the warden.
Ted in the lorry and Dennis in the Land Rover were nearly there. Suddenly, Dennis took the wrong track. A blind sheep could have done better than you have. The Beasley's lorry had arrived in ten bridges. She needs our help. She wants us down Ten Bridges. I'm talking to me dad down there. Come on, Joe, we're not finished yet. The last time, I'm not taking them. I can't, Beasley. Not with a sharp brand on them, I can't. Yeah, I'll take them and like it. I'm warning you, Burns. If the police find those sheep in my storehouse, I'll be finished. You should have changed the brand. I can't take them like that. Bill Burns, you know what'll happen to you and Mark if I drop a word to the police? Ah, you remember that, Bill Burns. You're gonna take those sheep. Come on, take the sheep and hand over the cash. Come on, hand it over. Oh, Beasley! Don't, Jack, don't! You leave my father alone, Beasley. The game's up, you're finished. The snoopers again. Yes, you didn't think we'd escape, did you? Well, we did. And now our friends are all around you. You're surrounded. Hey, hey, Ted. Yeah, that's right. Now give yourselves up. Surrounded, are we? Well, isn't that interesting? I think you're bluffing. Sunny boys. Hold it. Hold it. Perhaps you'd better put your hands up, lads. All of you, get them up fast. 
I don't know how you escaped or who let you out, but I'll tell you this, the game's not over for Ted Beasley, no, not by a long way. There we were, hands above our heads. Where were Jill and the warden? We're leaving you, lads. We'll have cash in hand for one lorry load of stolen sheep. Beasley, you, you can't do this. Can't I? Just you watch. Get that cash, Dennis. We're outside the town. I'm going to stop at a telephone box and dial 999. I'll tell the police where they can find three crooks and 50 stolen sheep. Get it? And we simply go home. Perfect. Not a scrap of evidence against me and Dennis. Oh, isn't there? It's your lorry, remember? What's your lorry doing full of stolen sheep? Oh, it's easy, Mike. I'll tell them you stole it. That's why I wanted you as a farmhand, don't you see, Mike? Just in case something like this came up. You're a right scoundrel, aren't you, Beasley? Thanks for the compliment. Now, not a peep out of any of you, you'll get it. Ah, you listen to my brother. Not a peep out of any of you. Please, don't make us have to shoot you. Stop squawking, you great twit, and get moving. What can we do? Nothing, Doc. Where's the warden? Let's get him. Get after them. Go on. Let's have a look. Come on. You better go that way, Joe. All you lot follow me. Oh, 
Beasley. Yeah, Beasley. <laughs> There's no need to worry now. You realize it yet, Joe? You're a hero, lad. Why well, might you even get a medal? And a new bike. I reckon you'd be top man at Castle Farm now. Sweep and I still look after the sheep, but I'm the foreman now. We still keep watch for rustlers, but there'll be no more trouble from the Beasley brothers.